Hello, good morning, everyone. This is now live, Christ is the Head Fellowship. And we thank God that you are here with us today. And we thank you that uh, you will be with us uh, for this great message for this morning. And so we just want to be, we want you to be a part of this message that uh, God gave to us today, and which is entitled Good News of Great Joy or Good News and Great Joy. So we are now going to get back or go back to where it it really happened about this great news, the good news of great joy. <clears throat> so it is not just joy. It was always called right there at that beginning of the Christmas story. And it said about this great joy. So it's something that we somehow should look forward to in our lives or get to the secrets of how to have this great joy that should be in our lives today and experience them. So it's found in Luke 2, 10 to 11b, and it says, And the angels said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. There you go, great joy. Where, to whom? That will be for all the people, right? And then it says, For unto you is born this day, that day that has been done, or has come to pass a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So there's this good news about the birth of this Savior who is Christ the Lord. And he is going to bring about the great joy in our lives. And that is for all the people. So it is not exclusive to some. It is for all the people. When he came, it's for all of us. It doesn't matter what race or culture that we belong to or whatever color of skin we have or whatever status or position or however we see ourselves, whether we are good or bad, naughty or nice, God came through the flesh in the form of the Savior Jesus Christ in the form of the baby birth unto a virgin by the Holy Spirit, and he brings great joy. I don't know about you if I've received this gift, but truly what this promise has been in my life, it's really great joy. Because even in the midst of all the things that has happened in my life, and some of my friends know, my precious friends, colleagues know, my best friends have known about my life, the troubles, the problems, the trials, the challenges, Jesus always brings about the joy right after. And I thank God for always this promise is true in my life. You know, there was a verse that says, you know, weeping may enjoy, endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So God knows that we have to go through some weeping somehow in the nighttime. But then later on, we will rejoice. Joy comes in the morning. And this is a beautiful morning that the shepherds has been brought to by this great news by the angels. And so they've been looking forward to a great joy that will come into the lives of the Israelites because they were promised a Messiah. But they didn't realize that this baby was born that day was the Messiah. And in fact, even though in her, his existence, right before them, Jesus said, I came to my own, but my own received me not. He was there, but he was rejected. And for somehow, you know, the reason why we're not experiencing great joy is because we do not accept the gift. We actually have, actually have rejected the gift, right? So here comes what it is about this good news of great joy. Because when he was born, these people who was there in that particular time of his birth, something mysterious has happened and it brought joy into their lives. And that they knew that God was alive. They knew that for years that they have waited for the prophecy to be fulfilled 
It came to pass right before their eyes. And so we have to connect with these people where this good news was brought to them and apply them in our daily lives today. Because what was promised then was also a promise for us because what it says here, this good news of great joy will be for all the people. So that is not exclusive for anybody, for anybody. <laughs> it is for all that is on the planet Earth. So let's now have a look on all of these things about this good news of great joy. All right. So let's move on. How come it's not going? Uh, Brother OG, it's not going to my page. Wait a minute for a sec, and I will forward my slides. All right. So here we go. The good news of the great King Jesus. Let's have a look. Pardon for that technical problem, but here's the good news of the great King first. Jesus is the name. So where is this news has come uh, to be announced? This is on Mary's account. Luke 1, 31 to verse 33. It says there, it was announced to Mary first that she will bear a son and that it will be the future king. So there was a king at the time during, uh, you know, Mary, when, when, the, when, when the pronouncement that she will give birth to this son, there was a King Herod at that time who rules. The Roman Empire is ruling the whole land of Judea, okay? In that part of Jerusalem, right? And then this angel came to Mary and says, you will bear a son and this will be the future king. And Mary was, you know, was actually just, you know, what is going to happen? She was surprised that this announcement was given to him and that what she's going to bear with and give birth to is the future king, right? And then it says that in that verse, he will be great, right? He was the son of the most high. So he's not in a descent of a man and a woman relationship, but this comes from God himself. Right? It is from the throne of God Himself. It was the Son of God Himself. And then it says about His description the throne of David will be given to Him. What is about the throne of David? The throne of David is the throne of the great king that has ever lived in Jerusalem, where His purpose being king has, you know, made Israel rich and prospering and at peace, and even winning on most battles. So this pronouncement was now handed over to this future king. This good news of the great king will be handed over to this king. And then it says he will reign over the house of Jacob. Now, when you talk about the house of Jacob, Jacob's descent was, you know, it was like a a family where problems, the 12 sons, right, has emerged. But there was that Joseph who ruled and reigned in the world, being prince of Egypt. And so that is an account that too, in the world, which is Egypt, which is the world, he will reign also on the earth, the world, right? And his kingdom will never end. So, worship this only king of all, which is for all. So, Luke 1, 30, 33, and it says here, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Amen. So that is about the good news of the great king, right? There was no other king that has ever lived that has this pronouncement ever. 
It is only Jesus Christ. And where Jesus Christ is, is actually at the right hand of the Father God seated right there with all the powers of the earth and heaven and earth under him. He was given that power. He was the king that was birthed long time ago and has died, resurrected, now seated at the right hand of the Father with all the powers under him and under his authority. Where can you not why, why can you not love? And why can you not simply believe that this was a good news for us all and that you need to get to know him? And most of all, accept this gift that the Father himself initiated for mankind, for us to have great joy. We are looking everywhere for joy to happen. We made it happen. In fact, this Christmas is all about consumerism. We all decorate every single one of our houses with lights and trees and everywhere so that it will, you know, it will make us feel happy. Well, happiness is found only in happenings. But the great joy, the real joy, the amidst all the circumstances where Jesus Christ will be present is always full joy, even in the midst of many trials and many pressures here in this planet Earth, that we are not going to be, uh, kumbaga eh, hindi tayo immune, will not be immune to what's going to happen here on Earth. So this is the great king that you must know and have his throne into our lives because we need to have him to be the throne in our lives so that he can reign within us. And when he's a throne in our lives, the great king in our lives, he is going to only make everything be in subjection to him. Because if Jesus knew he's a great king in your lives, he will make everything to be under subjection to him. There's no power greater than this great king if you have him in your spirit. And so you must accept this gift. It is for you to have this good news of great joy that you're going to have this great king above all kings and this kingdom will never end. It is a son of the most high, son of the most high. And you know, when you talk about God, God is always what? Good. And nothing is wrong or is a lie with God. Everything is always for our good, the Bible says. He never plans anything bad for us. Our minds and our souls is only dictated by what our sins and our enemies is always dictating about us. But God has always planned it out for our good. And this time, 20, 2022 years ago, this great news came and the birth of this great king happened right before the eyes of these people who have received this good news and also have seen this good news right before their eyes fulfilled in their lifetime. So the good news of the great king is what you need to know about, right? And you need to get to know him. The next one is the good news of salvation for all. Now, let's have a read on Luke 1, 77 to 79. To give to his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God with which the sunrise from on high will visit us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, expression of salvation. You see, people think that you just have to be to know Jesus and to get saved, and that's it. You see, in the tender mercy of our God, because we are still sinners, we can still have that forgiveness of our sins because of the tender mercy of our God. And the Bible speaks about mercy. It is always new every morning. Great is his faithfulness right? And his mercy is always forever. His love and mercy is steadfast 
right? And his, his mercy is always there. He's a merciful God. He is not a merciless like Satan himself, but he is a merciful God. He is not in any way like Satan. With which he's look at this, the sunrise from on high, it is the sunrise, is the light, will visit you to shine in the times where you are in darkness. Sit right there in your darkness, in your time of darkness, and in a time of the shadow that is right there with you, it saves you, and then it guides your feet into the way of peace. Isn't it that beautiful? That when you are in this midst, in this nook of darkness, and in you think that you're going to die, and yet when you realize that it is not just a savior for being saved eternally, but a savior that a sunrise will visit you, then that is for you. That is great news for all of us. You see, let's have a look. This is a promise now to Zechariah. It is a Zechariah's account. The first one was for Mary. The second one we found in the same chapter, in the same book, is in Luke, Zechari Luke 1, 76 to 79, about Zechariah's account. Let's have a look on that one. Zechariah pronounced a prophecy of what his son, John the Baptist, would become. So there is a prophecy that, you know, that his son, John, right, he spoke about that John would prepare the way for Jesus' salvation offer of forgiveness. You see, John was called as a prophet to prepare the way of the Lord. That was a prophecy given to Zechariah, the father. And so John, when he was conceived by Elizabeth, and then Mary was actually uh, also conceived Jesus in the three months apart or six months apart. When Mary visited, uh, you know, um, Elizabeth, the cousin of Mary, right? These two devout daughters of God and Zechariah and Elizabeth. Elizabeth, when Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb and visited Elizabeth's, uh, Elizabeth with, you know, with, with, with John in, his, in her womb, then John leaped as if like welcoming the presence of Jesus. So, you know, that alone is, mystery in itself that even though they're babies because they are all connected to the purpose of god they found that they are actually in connection to what will be unfold of jesus life and so john while he was still in the the womb of her mother elizabeth welcomed this good news of salvation for all and after the time that he was fulfilling his call as a prophet he did, and he saw Jesus, and he was the one who baptized Jesus. Remember that account? He was the one who baptized Jesus and saw the dove at 30 years old when Jesus was baptized by him. And saw the dove as a recognition of God's power that dawned on Jesus, and it was fulfilled. And then it says that this is a son of God who will forgive you of all of our sins and he said that so he was the one who gave light to those who sit in darkness as i've said a while ago those hopeless ones those of us who feel like in some moments or situations we feel like so hopeless that you think everything crumbles like hell and no and no point of this tunnel at the end a light and at the end of the tunnel and in the shadow of death but you see jesus is meant as this given great news for salvation for all of our needs, not just for eternal life, but for all of our needs. Because we humans is not all this, this you know, uh, this all these roses or, or blooming, uh, you know, always glowing, right? Lives that we have here. We are here in this sick, sin world where it's full of challenges most especially if you are a son or a daughter of the kingdom. You see, you will be a threat to all the enemies, uh, daughters and sons living on the earth. Those people who have not been called or have not accepted the Lord as their personal savior. And so we should be knowing that 
Jesus came as a good news for us all, not just for your eternal salvation, but also when you are in those things and moments of hopelessness and questions in life. So don't give up because Jesus came for you and I to have hope always and that he was given right there to be have for us to have great joy. So always speak joy to ourselves and pray joy to ourselves, the great joy. Every time you wake up, you speak, Jesus, I thank you that you came for me. And I want this great joy to be on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Because he was, you know, when you speak the promise of God, it came into action. Everything you pronounce, it will not go forth with uh, uselessly. It will come forth with fruits that will happen in your lives. Because declaration is important. You see, Satan can only bring lies to our heads and to our ears. But it's up to you to where you want those lies to get into you. You need to be in charge to speak life and light to ourselves because Jesus is light. Right? Amen. So, and he's the one who will guide our feet into the way of peace. Is any one of you right now who is having these troubled times, as we say it, or this you know, this longing of answers to really be in fruition. Why not seek God? Why not seek Jesus? Because the Bible promised that those who seek me will find me. And another one that says, if you search me with all your heart, you will find me. See, there is nothing that Jesus will, will cover up unless there's something that's hidden for you to be surprised of. What I see in Jesus, when things are not going my way, I will just keep silent and in prayer and just wait for the surprise. Because somehow before I, you know, I press in and I do it in my flesh, but it doesn't work. But with Jesus, if you only wait and believe what he has said here to Zechariah, which is also his way to convey to us who he is. When he was there and saw Jesus himself, he was he has it on his hand, hands, Jesus, alive in the temple. And he put it on his lap and declared this because he was also a prophet. He was also prophesying about who Jesus is at this time. And so this was the one, the words that said, was said by Zechariah, the good news that we have to know about Jesus. So. You know, the good news was not only isolated to Mary, it was also for all, to us, and even now, Zechariah, this promise is also for us. Amen? Another one is the good news of a Savior. In Luke 2, 8 to 11, and in the same region, there are shepherds, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were all with, filled with great fear. And the angel told them, said to them, fear not. You see, when you see some mysterious things that is just abnormal, that is not normal for our eyes to see, and then we see its grandeur, our initial response to that is, we are afraid, right? And so the shepherds, when they saw this grandeur of the heavenly host singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men, they were shocked. But then the angels said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. That is what it says there. That will be for all the people for unto you is born this day in the city of David, Jerusalem. Israel as Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. So you see this ordinary people. This is the shepherd's account now. This is where we get the good news of great joy. We identify ourselves with these people because these shepherds are just ordinary, working, hardworking men. And yet the angels appeared to them and gave them also part, brought them into the story of this great news. And now we read about them. 
And so put yourselves into their shoes, that you're one of those ordinary men. The shepherds, hardworking men, appeared to humankind like us. And this was an announcement of good news of great joy. So he announced to ordinary men, shepherds, by an angel. He brought the news about a Savior born unto us. You see, that Savior was not born for anybody's purpose, but for only for us, right? For us who is Christ the Lord, not only for shepherds, but for all of us, the people then and the people now, because it says all the people. And when you're going to actually have a look on the original meaning of for all the people, you will find it will connotate to generations to come, right? So Christ the Lord, which is right there, who is Christ the Lord, what does it mean? In Greek, it means Christos, means anointed one, or chosen one to do the works of the Father for all mankind. And we will see later what he has been anointed to, and that also, that anointing, he gave it to his disciples or this his anointed ones to us if we are going to work with this anointed one, right? But Christos, Christ means anointed one. And we will see the job of the anointed one, why he was chosen, anointed by God in the spirit, not only born in the spirit, but anointed, chosen to work for God. That is what it means about the anointed one. In Hebrew, equivalent to Mashiach, which means Messiah. Messiah is a messenger of God, right, for mankind. So Jesus was a human name given to Mary to call him. Amen. And Jesus Christ is his title. So that Jesus Christ means as Jesus the Messiah or Jesus as the anointed one. So Jesus was only a human name given to Mary to call him. You shall call his name Jesus. And Christ is his title. So iba yung, hindi to yung surname. This is not a surname of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the human name. Christ is the title. So that Jesus Christ means altogether as Jesus the Messiah or Jesus as the anointed one, the bringer of good news, the works that he will do in rep representation of God the Father himself. So to the Father, Christ as his title means he was sent by God to be a king and deliverer. So you'll find that in Daniel 9.25. And Isaiah 32, verse 1. Daniel also is a prophet. And he actually prophesied about this Savior that will come, Jesus. And so uh, Daniel has actually spoken about this Savior will be great king and also deliverer, right? So the anointed one, because, you know, the Father, his heart is also to deliver us from the strongest of Satan and also most of all, from eternal damnation in hell. And so Jesus Christ was a physical manifestation of God himself, and he was formed into a son of man, son of God, during that time, 20, 22 years ago, right? So let's move on. So this is the shepherd's account. We've got Mary's account. We've got the Zechariah's account, the good news of a savior, the good news of salvation. So this one, now you've got a personal Savior, the anointed one right there living in you that can deliver you and will be the one of service to you. Remember that he came not to be served, right? He came to serve. So he can save you and he can serve you. You see, we think that we're all the ones doing all our best to just, you know, bribe God to serve him with everything, right? But Jesus said, you know, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I, Jesus said, will give you rest. It's the other way around. So if ever we are so overwhelmed with many things that we have driven ourselves with all, all exhaustion of strength and talent and abilities, like give it over to Jesus because Jesus will actually speak to you by the Holy Spirit and then he will give you ample rest. Amen. So, you know, somehow we, we, we kind of have to know 
really in the Bible about the opposite of the spirit of Jesus. You see, we get to be normalized in you know, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we approach God, the way we deal with relationships. But you see, Jesus in the book of the Gospels have a different kind of set of life. He short shared to us the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes of Jesus, of the kingdom living that we should really learn. And this is how the Savior can work in our lives if we continuously just trust him that he is a savior, not just to bring us from, you know, eternal damnation, but he is the deliverer every time you need service. So instead of you brooding or soaking into this long time history of hurts and pains and all the rest, I'm also speaking to myself because somehow we get to forget what has been done by Jesus over time in our lives. And then we get to a new experience of hurt or pain or problems. And then we talk back again. And we tend to forget that the Savior, we have the good news of the Savior that is within us, that can deliver us, that can speak to us, serve us in the way that we want to be served. Because we have a beautiful Savior, right? Savior serves you. Every time, Jesus has already, have, we've seen how Jesus served many kinds of people, high people, low people, poor people, rich people, doubting people, doubting disciples, unbelief and all the rest. Jesus catered for those kinds of people. So Jesus can cater for you and I, right? So go to him now because he carries the good news of great joy for you today. And you need to know, even though he was not born today, if there is a time now that you can really accept this gift of good news of great joy, then now is the time to open up your heart and sincerely open up your heart and open that door of acceptance and don't close the doors for him, right? Get Jesus in, into your heart of hearts. Amen? Now, the last but not the least, Good news for is for the Gentiles and Israel. Now, Luke two thirty two. It says, "A light of re for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory to your people Israel." Then Simeon. This is now Simeon's account. Luke two thirty four to thirty five. Then Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, "Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel." And for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. See, Jesus, when he came, right, he will be light. You see, the promises for both the Gentiles and the Israelites, or the Gentiles, or the uh, Hebrews, or the Jews, or the non Jews. This is what Gentiles and Israel means. You see, it will be light for us Gentiles because the promise before and the light before was only pronounced in the Old Testament, particularly to the chosen nation Israel. But when Jesus came into the picture, he brought everyone, he included everyone into his death and blessings, right? And he, now the Gentiles will have the same revelation of blessings and the same revelation of prosperity in life and in the world to come and in the life to come for us. And it will be, bring also glory to the Israel, how it was brought glory before and it was gone because of their sins and rebellion towards God. But when Jesus came, now everyone who receives the Messiah, the glory will be brought back to them. The glory that was lost, right? Because the Messiah is there for them to know him and to get back to the glory that once was theirs. Amen. So then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary's mother. So Simeon saw it again in the temple. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And for a sign which will be spoken against, yes, a sword will pierce through your own also, 
that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So let's have a look on the account of Simeon. So Simeon was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. You see, they were waiting for the consolation of Israel because Israel was under the rulership of Roman Empire. So they were helpless. They were supposed to be having their own king. But right at the time, they were under the power of someone, not in their own descent. So when Jesus came, a revelation has happened and the glory was brought back right there before Simeon's eyes. And this was pronounced when he carried the child on his hands as well. And so he said this, that, you know, the, the Holy Spirit revealed to him, he will not see death until his own eyes will see him. So he, when he saw Jesus, the, bar, the Holy Spirit has told him that you will not see death until you see the Lord. And right there, it was there and he saw the Lord. And then that's a sign that he's going to actually, you know, be, be gone to heaven and be with the Father forever and ever. So he will not taste death. And so that was the account of Simeon. Right, he was in the temple when he saw Jesus being offered, right at the time in a season that he needs to be offered, um, which is the tradition of the Israel to the firstborn male, they have to offer it first to the Lord, right? And Simeon was there, was a devout, righteous, uh, you know, servant man of God. And so, you see, the thing about you know, people who are passionate and in zeal for God. They do have revelation, a special revelation, direct revelation by the Holy Spirit. And so Simeon took Jesus on his lap. He declared that he has seen salvation and that Jesus will be a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to God's people, Israel. Jesus will be for the fall and rising of many in Israel and will be a sword to pierce soul that many hearts will be revealed. Amen. So what does it mean is Jesus will be hope to all. No more exclusive blessings to the Israelites, but to all. What does it mean when it will be a sword to pierce so that many hearts will be revealed? He also will reveal the hearts of men. Of course, Jesus will know who are his sheep. Remember that? The Bible says that I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and my sheep will hear my voice. And so everyone who follows Jesus, he reveals every single heart if you are his sheep or not. So that is not just about, this is about the great news for all who are passionate and are really walking with Jesus. We can't fool him. He is the greatest gift for great joy, but he means business for all of our lives and our lifetime. We cannot hide. We cannot actually play safe like some of us are playing safe when it comes to positions, when it comes to your loyalty. To God, it will be made manifest. He will reveal the hearts of men to Jesus. He will reveal the hearts of men. He will be a sword to pierce divide right the bible is like that too it is a sword that pierces and divides the soul from the spirit god can always check on us where we are at it is a great news for those who are passionate to those who are meaning business with god that we all of us who are passionate will be on the path of glory and eternal life promise to all of us amen so the good news for redemption. Amen. So this is now on Anna, the prophetess account. Let's have a look on Luke 2, 36 to 38. It says, Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. He saw Jesus with the parents. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph. So Anna saw while Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began Praising God. She received it in her spirit. She is a prophetess. And you know, when you are a prophet, you received a direct message from God. You see, when God called you as a prophet or prophetess, right, you will receive God's message. You will never 
be in any way be absent in what the good news from the high highest of all, which is from God himself, right? And so she talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly. So she was always there. It has a record in the verse who, uh, how long she waited, <clears throat> waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. She was also hopelessly praying in the temple for a great king to rule them like David. Because when David has become the king during then in the Old Testament, every single one of the Israelites are in rejoicing in total happiness because David ruled for 40 years and he ruled Israel with all the goodness, the greatness of the riches, and everything else that they have experienced peace and joy and victory in David's reign. So over time, when the Romans have, has taken over the Jerusalem, the city of David, right? The people that are devout and righteous, they're crying out every time in the temple, waiting for it to happen. And so Anna the prophetess, being faithful to God, has received and seen with her own eyes the prophetic, um, you know, Daniel prophecies has been fulfilled in her lifetime. And so a prophetess, he was, she was a prophetess who never depart from the temple. Would you believe that? Never depart from the temple. I, I bet she was she was only changing clothes, but she always goes to the temple because she was an early widow. Seven years, she was only uh, related to her husband who died after seven years. And then until 84 years old, she worships God with fasting and prayer night and day until she was 84. And she saw Jesus right before her eyes. Amazing woman, right? How how he her devotion to just wait how many years until she was old and not to even see it that the promise of God while she was there fasting and praying, Lord, where will you come? Where is the Messiah coming? And then she saw it. What a great news of great joy has happened to her right there before her eyes. Amen. That day she received a message from God. At the very hour, Jesus was brought in the temple and gave thanks to God. She spoke about him to all. Of course, when you are a prophetess, when you're given that mandate, you have to bring the message. So he has announced, as any prophets would do in obedience, about redemption to all, especially to the Israelites. She was probably telling everyone in the temple, hey, guys. Look, redemption has come, right? The Messiah has come. This is now hope for all of us. And redemption, we know that when Anna spoke about that, redemption, it means it is a payment of a ransom, releasing Christians from bondage to sin and death. Amazing, right? So when you, are said, when you said to yourself, you must believe that the redemption, Jesus came for your redemption. So you don't have to really worry that no wonder Jesus said in Matthew 6, do not worry. It is not an option. It is a command because Jesus was just saying to you, hey, I came already and has done it for you. And I'm now at the right hand of the father with every authority and powers under me. Now you go to me. Because I can deliver you, I can release you from any bondage of sin and even death. Redemption by his blood. Remember the Bible that says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And you know that this child didn't remain to be child and then went to heaven, right? He died. And Isaiah has a record of all the things that he has suffered and also the, the New Testament have also some history books, the sufferings that he actually has gone through to just purchase us by his blood and gave us a redemption that we even don't deserve, right? But God, the Father, planned it all out and brought us 
in that announcement of the birth of his son, the son of the Mosai, that, hey, now you've got hope. And I give it to you now through this son. And so that is a great gesture of God to bring about his own son, a represent, perfect representation of who he is so that we could see, like who could see who God is, right? And he did it all and we've seen that. And if you want to see who God is, just read the book of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And even the Acts, even all the New Testament books, of thou how they have witnessed all of these disciples who lived with Jesus before and was then called empowered like him as the apostles, written all those New Testament books, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that they have an account and record of who God is. Amen. And now it is alive and is now uh, free for us all to learn about the good news of the great joy that we have to avail now. Don't miss out. Don't listen. You know, we have to know that the Savior has been born for us, for unto us that this child was born. And now he is at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us day and night. Amen. So that is the role of this Jesus and Anna the prophetess cannot help herself as a prophet she announced to all that there is the savior the one that is waiting expectantly for god to rescue jerusalem from the bondage of sin and of death they were hopeless at the time but when jesus came everyone who comes to him they were healed none of them has been hopeless everyone who even touches just the garment, the hem of his garment has been healed. Everyone who just saw him in his eyes was healed. Everyone who just touches her hand or her, his hand or his feet was anointed. God, Jesus came for all of our good and also our freedom and redemption. He already paid the ransom. You don't have to really punish yourself as in every Easter, you know, uh, uh, cultural and tradition that we have in our birth country, right? That people come forward and just slash themselves, have, you know, all these accounts of drama that, you know, that they need to whip up themselves. In fact, my husband was one of those actors who just has that kind of experience. But now he knew and we knew so we don't need to do the reenactment of what he did because we can't really get to the reality and to the gruesomeness of what has happened there. We cannot even connect it, right? It has already been done. Redemption has been done. The ransom has been paid. All we have to do is go to Jesus. He is the great news of great joy for all of us. It was great news for all these people then. It will be great news for our generations now. So avail of that revelation and that truth in your heart or hearts. So why great joy? The good news of great joy, not just joy, but great joy. Because the good news of the promises about our Lord Jesus Christ was a done deal for all men. Amen. Jesus did it for all. He did it. And he was given for all, right? He is the King of Kings. At what we, as what we have, uh, you know, studied today, he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His kingdom has no end. Somehow, we tend to be afraid of what all these royalties they represent, and we worship them. We even bow down to them. The presidents, how we honor them, respect them. But we tend to forget that there is one, this great King above all kings above all rulership and leadership in the whole world, that we need to know who is government. Every government is under his rulership. We will actually see that in the verses in the truth about who he is. The government is upon his shoulder. He's the king of kings that you only need to know and be personal with him, be related with him in your intimacy, walk right here on planet Earth. He will forgive all our sins 
and its consequences of bondage and death and give us light to his way of peace. Has sins overwhelmed you? How, how sins of others overwhelmed you? And then you get to participate with the consequences. You know, what I'm saying this is like when you are in a family and one of your family members has actually committed many, many sins against your own family and yet you were actually a, part, a family member. And so what that person did you are also actually in acquaintance with the grief and the consequence of it, right? But you see, Jesus, if you are the offender and the one being offended, Jesus can forgive all our sins and its consequences, bondage and death. But you must seek him with all your heart to find his light to his way, peace. Because there's always peace. There's always peace through Jesus. Kaya lang, somehow we don't really seek, search him with all our hearts. We only search him in a shallow way, in our conditional way, but that in his way. So that is where sometimes our forgiveness and our consequences has not changed because he wants you to seek more and seek deeper to where you can reach the absolute perfect peace. Not the kind of peace that you can make by yourself. To pay yourself to get to peace. Like, you know, people will go farther places to just have this time off. That's not, that's not what I'm trying to say, to not have it yourself here. Or to go, um, you know, some course just to forget about it. But if it's not the Jesus way, the God way, it's not going to last. You see, because Jesus is always his perfect way to bring you into that peace that passes all understanding, right? So that is the peace. He is the Prince of Peace, and that peace of God must rule and reign in our hearts. Not the kind of peace that anybody can, you know, give us or advise. The peace of God is different. The peace that you work for yourself is somehow sometimes different from what God's peace would be. And so we have to go again to find this great joy, amen, through Jesus. Also, he will give revelation to both Gentiles and Jews and that everyone will be recipients of faith, blessings. Amen. It was pronounced in Genesis 12 for this nation Israel. It was also pronounced in Hebrews 11 for us to be beneficiaries. And even in that this Gen Genesis 12 about us, about the blessings that was pronounced to Abraham, it says there, this blessing is for Abraham and his descendants, and you are a father of faith. Now, if you are in faith, you are also recipients of this faith blessings, this conquering, victorious, uh, continuous provision of blessings from God. Amen. So, both Jews and Gentiles, there's no more, uh, you know, a partiality or favoritism. When Jesus came, he came for all. And he wants to bring great joy into all of our lives. Walang exclusive. Wala dito uh, partiality when it comes to. I mean, the apostles have said that. All of God's children are equal before his eyes. The only thing that matters is that favor is given to those who obeys the will of God and is walking in the will and keeping in step with the Spirit. So yung favor and blessings doon lang nagkakaiba. But all the blessings of faith, we are all given by God, ample blessings one after the other, and grace after grace, depending on our needs. Amen? He is king, but also deliverer himself. Meron ka bang nakita ang king na nagde-deliver? You know, they only authorize, but he's not the deliverer. He only authorized his you know, armies to do it for him, to deliver the country. You know, it was never the one who delivers, you know, a country or serves the people. But this king, Jesus, the king of kings, the anointed one is the one that served or serves us all. Even now, he will continue to serve you. Remember that God's chosen servant message that we have? He is God's chosen servant for you to serve you right to serve him and to serve you as well 
So another one is the why great joy because he is our total overall redeemer from sin, bondage, and death. So that eternal life and destiny is possible and attained. You see, we have this journey in this earthly life. And Jesus knew exactly what he meant that I will deliver you from anything that binds you and that you need to agree with him and his word and that everything is already given for you. All you have to do is search. Huwag ka lang tamadin na hindi mag-search because one of the things is about being Christian is just like these people who have seen the fruition of the fulfillment of the prophecy. They waited and are being devoted, devout, righteous people of God. Even to Mary, before the announcement, Gabriel gave the announcement to Mary, he says, you are favored, have favor with God, because Mary in that verse was righteous also and devout. See, all of the people that will receive and will have this great news of great joy, right? Where you are at now, seek Jesus, seek God with all your heart. And you will receive that great news of great joy. So here are all the things of the promises of God about during that time where we can actually avail. Still now, this is our promise. It was now for the Gentiles, as non-Jews, to receive all the promises of God. Because he is faithful to all of his children. Don't feel hopeless. In fact, even if you, know, you think you've messed up and you've become a failure, God sees you still as a prodigal son, sees you and waits for you to come back, and still is your being son and daughter is still intact. It's going to bring back to you the ring of authority, your identity with him. It's going to bring back to you the mantle and the robe that you are going to be protected while you are in his premises back again see that's where we only get to experience the blessings of god we need to be inside this vacuum of you know the, the shield of glory that will come from the father through the through the birth and also the presence of jesus christ in us amen we need to appropriate jesus in his presence through the spirit because there is only this protection that will come. The blessings will be in fruition in your life and mind. If minds, in your life and mind, if we are in this glory presence of God, even, you know, the brother of that prodigal son, even though he is jealous, still is the father loves him, right? And he was still there, even though he winched, and also he complained about the prodigal son who actually have exhausted all the blessings and it came back in repentance. And I'm pretty sure that prodigal son has done his best in service for his father this time. Because you see, he even said that to his father, Father, I am not even worthy to be called your son. I will just serve like one of your servants. But the father resisted. No, your uh, your identity with me, it still is you are a son. And so he brought back all these things as a gesture that is not meant to be slave, but actually meant to be a son. So don't be a slave in your minds and in your hearts and in your soul. If you're a son, just get back to Jesus if you mess it up, because he's going to bring back to you the great news of great joy. And if you are now sad, and is lonely because, you know, something happened in your life, go back to Jesus and tell him, Lord, I will come back and receive this good news of great joy. You came for me and for my benefit and for all the blessings, and I received them today. You just need to rise up and declare that to yourself. Enough of thinking bad about ourselves, enough of, think of, of being dictated by what the world and our enemies have gone spread, wild spread about what you have done, the mistakes that you have trusted them, enough of all those things because Jesus 
will be your deliverer and he will say to it that you'll find your light in the way of peace. Amen. So our promise of good news of great joy is Jesus Christ, the Lord himself. That is the good news of great joy. Himself is the promise of God. Will you receive this gift of God? Now ask yourself this because at the end of this message, I'm going to actually invite those who have not known Jesus as their personal Savior. Because it is for this occasion that he came for you and I's benefits and blessings. While we are on earth, he wants us to experience the life and life abundantly that he said in John 10.10. 10. Yes, the enemy who was by default has been the ruler of this world and is in oppression, opposing, uh, opposing God in us. And yet he, he, came to, he came to steal, kill, and destroy us. And yet Jesus said in that verse, but I came to give you life and life abundantly. That is your answer. Don't look on the first verse and then highlight and magnify the killing, stealing, and destroying. No more of that now. We have to bury once and for all the killing and destroying enough of the stealing and the killing and destroying of everything that we have in Christ. We need to speak now before New Year comes and declare it. And CHF will have a time before New Year to have these Zoom meetings on and all of us will declare it what is going to happen in the new years to come. Amen. So that we will have all this great joy that will be prepared for us by Jesus. Because it is really a great new year coming. The great joy and the great harvest coming for all of the world. Amen. So for unto us, this is a promise of God. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. Like, don't worry about the government where you are at now in your countries, right? The government is upon his shoulder. Your king of kings and the Lord of lords is right there on the throne. We will call, he will command and in charge of all this that he sees from way above the third heavens. And he's looking down to it and says, no, 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 no. I am in charge. So the government is upon his shoulder and his name will be called. This is for you. Wonderful. Counselor, you need the counsel? Go to him. Go to his word. Mighty God, he can do all things beyond your wildest expectations. Everlasting father, you see that? The father who has had the prodigal son, he has always remains the father. And what more who God is for you? He is not angry at you. Yes, he will chastise you if you're out of line. But he will be your everlasting father. And Jesus was also has been a representation of that. You can always go to him in prayer. And then the prince of peace. Yes, we are in this chaotic world. But yet we have the prince of peace right within our hearts. Amen. Of the increase of his peace. This was Isaiah prophesying and has been fulfilled. Of this government and peace. He's got a government because he's the king of kings. Right? He's got a kingdom. And of the increase of his government, this is talking about Jesus and peace, there will be no end. His kingdom is great. His government and peace of God of peace is great. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see, there is a zeal, a stamp of revelation that it will happen in our lives and in the lifetime to come. You see, Jesus and God will never lie. He is in charge. They are in charge for judgment and justice from that time forward when Jesus came. Right? Amen. Next. There's no partiality. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There are neither slaves nor free. There's no male and female, for you are all one in Christ. Amen. The next one, Micah 7, 18 to 19. See, we are one in Christ in the blessings. Don't forget that. Who is the God like you? This one's talking about God who pardons sins and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. 
You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. See that kind of heart? The opposite spirit of who God is rather than man, how man actually judge us and see us, right? You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurt, hurl our, all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. When you do these things, it's like, boom, gone in one second, right? Because this is who God is. This is the kind of God we serve, the kind of God who brought us this great news of great joy. Your iniquities and mine, does that matter to God because he will be that everlasting father, father who disciplines, forgives, and welcomes you back. Amen. This is the God we serve. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Isn't it that God's grace is, is never exhausted? God's grace will never be exhausted. The redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins will be in accordance to the riches of God's grace. God's grace you can never fathom in our own physical mind. His grace is spiritual and we cannot even describe it, but it will always be inactive in us. It will always work its way in us. Just press on to that amazing sufficient grace of God. The apostles lack one day, once and in their lifetime as they serve, but this grace has been sufficient to them. It meant to carry on to the finish line. And that has happened to the many apostles that throughout is their death and being martyred, they have carried the grace that has sustained them even in the midst of death. Look for 18 to 19. It says the spirit of the Lord. This is the anointed one you have and avail of his service because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Right? There's good news. If you feel you're poor and you're poor, there's good news. Ask. What's the good news? And Jesus will tell you the secrets. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from the prisoners. You think that you are in bondage and you think you cannot break through? And here you go. This is the service of the anointed one and you will have the great joy. Just expect and believe. This is what God wants. We have to believe him. He doesn't work in doubt because the Bible says that when you are in doubt, you are a double-minded man and stable in all your ways. God hates doubters because he is God. He's not man. Don't equate God with man. They are different. God is higher than man. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. You go to God and he will find that key where you will be unlocking the, the, the secrets to his blessings, right? He will give you freedom. He will unlock you from that prison and recovery of sight for the blind physically and spiritually to release the oppressed. Are you oppressed by conspiracies, by wrong judgments? Then God will release you from that, right? Go to God and ask him in prayer to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He is the one who will give you that year where the Lord's favor will all be unfolded and you will be surprised. And all of us should look forward to who this anointed man, man of God, anointed one will do for all of us. Amen. Be expectant. This is where he was anointed. Remember that? Christos, the anointed one. Jesus Christ is the anointed one who is for us. Okay. These promises of God about him is reasons to rejoice anytime. No wonder. Apostle Paul says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. And even it says in Peter that in tribulations, we can rejoice. In fact, they sang in the prison cell, right? Uh, Peter was, was actually there with Barnabas. And they were, you know, in prison, in prison bars. And when they sang, they got loose, right? And even the angels showed them the way out, right? So good or bad. He remains the same. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. There is always hope. Don't listen to wrong 
uh, you know, wrong kinds of people. The people who always puts you, accuse you. That is not the voice of God. The voice of God is different. You must hear the voice of the shepherd and get to know his voice to his spirit in prayer and in the word. So this is all about our topic for today. These promises of God about him is reasons to rejoice anytime. Good or bad, it remains the same. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. This is the good news of great joy. He came to his own and his own received him not before, but now he came that is, is giving this door of opportunity and this chance of a lifetime. You need to get to know him as your personal Savior and Lord because he's got the best eternal benefits that is for you prepared for you when you get to know him so at the first of this is now ending but first and foremost i'd like to lead people who have not really come to a point of agreement that the savior has been formed for them and that they need to receive the gift because in john 1 12 but as many as receive him right you must receive him his gift god gave god so loved the world that he gave his only son Right? As a gift for us to receive. So you must receive him as your personal savior. So now join me in prayer, just for a short while, for those who have not known Jesus Christ, because he is that great news of great joy that you need to know so that you will not be absent of this great joy, even in the midst of all the things that we are going to go through in life. Because the Bible says in this world, you will have tribulation but then the next phrase says but be of good cheer that means be of great joy because jesus said this look at these words i have overcome the world how did he overcome the world he died he sacrificed he paid the ransom for you and i and so our state in god's eyes is already freedom we're already free amen so in jesus christ we just ready today with og that our life is hidden in with christ in god if you have jesus in your heart of hearts and you have him as your lord and savior your life is hidden with christ and if your life is hidden with christ no element of power or anything as in romans 8 38 and 39 says no element of power can separate you from the love of god who is in christ jesus your lord so make him your lord and so i will actually invite those who have not received jesus and come in agreement with me and pray it right there where you are and accept jesus christ as your lord so come and I pray with me father god i thank you that you gave the gift of great joy to me jesus christ to be my lord and personal savior father god i thank you that he, you said that by his blood there is forgiveness of sins father i thank you that today that you said you have given me that gift that i need to receive to make him lord of my heart and life father now i thank you that my sins forgive me for my sins cleanse me by his blood Make me like the son and daughter of yours, Lord. I accept this gift of salvation that Jesus gave to all. I received your gift in the person of Jesus Christ. And I thank you now that I have eternal life with him. And that this life I have, I knew, Lord God, that he will work with me, in me, through me, with the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to use me and you will bring this great joy in me. It will be made manifest in my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you are now here in my heart. And I give you permission and surrender this one life that I only have and give it all to you in surrender and in yieldedness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You'll seal me now. Mark me now in the love's book of life 
where my name is written. And I will go home whenever Jesus Christ will come and bring us home, coming soon to bring us all home. I thank you, Lord, for this gift, of this great news, great joy, who is Jesus Christ himself. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, can I pray for you all who have been with us for this, for this hour? And just thank you all for continuously listening to this uh, messages of hope and empowerment because that is what Jesus' heart is. For those who are weary, tired, broken, in bondage, Jesus is the good news of great joy. You have to receive him now and receive him and make money and let him do his works of service in you and through you. Amen. And for you because he loves you. He was given to us. He came for all of the people. This news is for you and I. This great news of great joy. So God bless you and let me pray in closing. Father, I thank you that Lord, let the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the grace and mercy of our Lord be upon all and let the countenance shine upon all of us. Your people, Lord God, that Father God, that all of us, Father God, will always see that light in the way of peace that you lord will always be that redeemer that will always free us from any bondage of sin and death and its consequences i thank you lord god that you are forever our deliverer and that you lord will make manifest your redemption through the riches of your very grace i thank you lord jesus we thank you holy spirit we are in confidence that this not only this season, but in the unfolding of the new year to come. Lord God, we thank you that we will have this brand new right use. And even starting right now to experience this great joy that we made manifest in our lifetime today. I speak that over to everyone who is here and listened on our messages that Lord, great news of great joy will come upon their lives, come upon all of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to whom everything and all heaven and earth must bow down in this glorious, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We praise you, we bless you, we glorify you, and we worship Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind, to him we pray, amen and amen. So God bless you, my dear friends. And I hope that you're going to spend this great joy that will be made manifest for Jesus Christ, your Lord, loves you. And we love you. God bless you. Bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen.